I don't know why God hasn't given us five saviors or 15 religious ways to satisfy him. I don't know the answer to that question. And let's just take a hypothetical situation. Suppose there is a God. Let's start with that supposition. And suppose that God is altogether absolutely holy. And suppose that God, not out of any necessity within himself, but out of sheer love and graciousness, creates a world. And he inhabits this world with a vast array of animals and plants. And then when he's finished, his crowning act of creation is a creature that he shapes in his own image and breathes into this creature his own breath and gives this creature preeminence over all of creation, dominion over all the world, and gives him the task of mirroring and reflecting God's own holy character. And God gratuitously heaps all kinds of benefits on this creature but gives one restriction to this creature and says, you're not allowed to touch or eat of this particular fruit. And as soon as God turns his back, suppose this creature, totally ungrateful, who owes his creator everything, turns around and grasps for equality with his creator and openly, willfully defies the law of God. And God had told him, if you do this, you die. Now suppose right then God would have erased mankind from the earth. He would have been perfectly just to do it, wouldn't he? Yes. I said, but suppose God was so patient, so kind, that he said, I will cover this creature's nakedness, and I will provide a way of salvation for him, and I will promise to deliver this ungrateful sinner from his desperate condition. I am going to send to this people who reject everything I do for them, I am going to send my only begotten son. And I am going to take the sins of my people and transfer them to the back of my own son who is perfectly righteous and perfectly innocent. And they kill the son. And God said, that's okay. You killed him. But if you will just put your trust in him and honor him, I will forgive you of every sin that you have ever committed against me and against him. And I will give you eternal life where there will be no more death, no more tears, no more wickedness, no more pain, no more suffering, and you will live forever in unending bliss. But my only requirement is that you honor the one who has died in your place. Buddha didn't die for you. Moses didn't die for you. Mohammed didn't die for you. And I require that you honor and embrace my only son. Would you dare to stand before God on the day of judgment and say, God, you have not done enough for me? Would you look into the face of God and say, one way of salvation is not enough. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Beloved, I don't think that people who believe in Christ are any better than people who believe in something else. We're not talking about the superiority of the people. 
but I'm sure it rankles God Almighty to hear any human being even mention Buddha in the same breath with Jesus Christ. Because Christ alone is sinless. Buddha was a sinner. Buddha couldn't save himself, let alone anyone else. Mohammed was a sinner, and Mohammed never saved anybody. Only Christ is sinless. Only Christ has offered an atonement. Only Christ has provided redemption for us. If that's not enough for you, if that's too restrictive for you, then go your own way. But it's the only way that God has provided. You choose that or you perish.